Reach 50 will, willful. Awesome. The remaining demons were killed or escaped back into the Everburn Mountains. To be killed another day, the corpses were piled and burned. It had been a battle to get a foothold of a city, but it was critical to their success. Furthermore, the dwarves of Hammerhands had their city made safe once again. They joined the Grand Army to fight for Loren, strengthening them considerably. On the backs of Griffin, Queen Karen and Brezza return. Karen spoke of a fierce battle in the Amazon capital that took the lives of many kin. It was a very somber moment while Loren listened to the names of the, her subjects listed. But the Citadel was saved, and that was the most important thing. Later, Apollo Mesho called for a private meeting with Loren, Karen, and Saren. Loren, Karen, Saren! Loren, Karen, Saren! Saren stood next to Loren, waiting for Apollo Mesho to speak, but the old wizard was quiet and reluctant to say what he had called them to hear. Princess Loren, Queen Karen, Saren. You know that I and others have already fought Faust in the past. I wish to share with you now all that I have learned from that time. You haven't told us everything yet. No. No, some of it was too painful to remember. Saren wondered if he was speaking of his lost child. But now is the time to know, because we are so near. Tell us, wizard. We are listening. As you know, Faust is the spirit of a long-dead warrior inhabiting his old suit of armor. However, he is not a typical demon, nor simply undead or even a whisper of a ghost. Then what is he? He is a true death knight. He has been reborn and corrupted by dark magic in its rawest form in Inferno. Our world was once ravaged by his kind. We are all capable of believing that, knowing the damage he has caused. What does this mean? How do we kill him? You cannot kill the embodiment of evil like any common beast. It's... More complicated than that. Everyone's throats went dry, hearing the dread in Apollo Mesho's voice. I did not know this during the old war. None of us were aware of the depth of evil we were fighting. But I've spent every year of my life since the day Faust's armor fell apart in researching his nature. Everything I have learned has led me to believe that. When anything dies, a rift to the underwhelm is open. And that is where our souls go. The stories about life after death. Are they true? I do not believe what lies in the Underrealm can be called life. It is the realm of non-existence, and we need Faust to reside there, permanently. Underrealm? No, there is Inferno, and there is Elysium. Those are the only two places one can go upon death. Nothing in my research can account for their existence. It may, in fact, be a frame of mind that you can achieve, I am not sure. Hold on! Are you saying that Faust didn't truly die when you killed him back in the Old War? No. Rejoining the pieces of his armor would reanimate him, so his spirit was still very much alive, willing to wait however long it took until the pieces met again. It's true he was removed from our realm, but his soul was still unbound from death. We must find where his true spirit is hiding, and eject him, eject him to the underrealm where he belongs. I will do whatever it takes. He cannot terrorize the world ever again. Mirth will find his location with her divination, and we will crush him. It is not so simple. Most divination can only search this realm, and it is likely that Faust is hiding away from our realm. All this talk of realms! I have studied the theory of realms for many years. But they are still only theories, true. I chose to believe them, because they are only the, the only explanation for Faust remaining alive after all this time. The most important discovery of the theory of realms has already been proven in the last war. My daughter discovered it fighting a companion death knight to Faust. What discovery was it? Death itself is the gateway to the Underrealm. Faust has escaped death, so he is incapable of dying. The door to his death has been permanently closed. To send him to the Overrealm, Underrealm, we would first need a gateway. The group was quiet when he finished speaking. The silence allowed them to make the unfortunate connection. You were saying... Someone must die. Saren went rigid. Everyone did. A sacrifice. Yes. Who? It cannot be merely anyone. I wish it were that easy, but the task requires the martyr. Of the martyr is too great. It, it requires with someone with great skill and timing and someone who possesses enough greatness to create a rift in their death large enough for a death knight and, of course, for themselves. They could each hear their army celebrating in the city through the windows, but not a sound was made within the room. Saren looked at Loren and his queen. 
Both of their expressions were as grave as the news they had just heard. These were the two greatest people he knew. One of them was going to die, and willingly, Saren's heart wrenched. I will do it. They whipped around to face him. Saren! I know I'm not as great as you or the queen, but it is because you are the great that you must live. Avavon needs great rulers, but it doesn't need me anymore. I want to make this my duty. Absolutely not! I will not let you do it instead! Lauren looked horrified. You do not need to decide now. All you need to be prepared, though, just in case. We cannot rest all of our hopes on just one person, so all three of you should prepare yourselves. They gave up arguing who would sacrifice themselves, as they all agreed to be nominated together. Which one of them would pay the higher price was yet to be determined. It may be best for all of us if this is kept private. It would cause chaos among their comrades if they knew what had to be done. Laura knew that everyone would attempt to sacrifice themselves just as Saren had done. She had already made up her mind to become a martyr, but unfortunately, so had Saren and her mother. The door opened and Mirth entered the room. She immediately picked up on the tension and looked around wearily. I'm sorry, but I think it is time to start a divination, Archwizard. Yes, I will accompany you. Mirth and Apollometra left the room quietly. The three of them stood in silence with each other for a moment longer. Lauren broke away first, briskly leaving. Karen gave Saren a compassionate yet pleading look and followed suit. Saren looked through the window to the volcano just outside of the city. In those mountains lay his fate. As a slave, he had never thought he would give the world anything, and he was never once dead, as, and he never desired to. But now there was only one thing he was sure of. Saren was going to lay his life down for Avervorn, for Lauren. Mirth was required to be isolated when she performed divination to secure Faust's whereabouts. Apollomesho used his powers to strengthen hers, giving her all that she needed. The process was expected to take days, and the army needed that time to recuperate, and for Lauren, Karen, and Saren to mentally prepare themselves for what might await them in Everburn. After much soul-searching, the entire party was prepared to face the trials ahead of them. Mirth returned from her divination with Apollomesho. She revealed that Faust had a secret lair underneath his castle, which was crucial information. Lauren arranged for the army to mobilize in the morning. They had but one more day to train and one more night to rest, and then it would all be over. Make way for the caravan! A long string of wagons rolled into hammer hands, laden with crates, barrels, and heavily armed men. What are these wagons doing here? The city has been evacuated. We know that, and we know all about the war going on too. We're not stupid. So we wanted to help out. The other merchants and I got together our best supplies and we wanted to offer them to you. That's great. Thank you. For the price, of course. Of course. Mercenaries. Have you men come to fight? We might have. Might. We're not going to risk our lives for nothing, you know? They grinned, showing they were true blades for hire. I'll hire them. I will pay you your dirty fee, but only because coin will be useless if we fail this next battle. Take it, with my resentment. Gold is gold, lady! We are now under your command. We'll try to behave. Lauren ignored their seediness, knowing that the war on Everburn was worth any cost, and needed the help of any hands, even those of bandits. Hmm... Hmm. 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 
Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. We gotta sell this, sell this. I'm pretty much completely out of stuff now. Uh, but that's that's not that's not a bad thing or anything. That's actually kind of nice to know that we've pretty much equipped everyone as heavily as I can. Um, let's see here. You could not really afford any of this. Okay. What about our friendly Draco? He cannot afford it either. All right. Leave the shop. And now I'm going to go save it again. New slot, because that's what the extra slots are for. People who, like, say that they're not going to fucking reload and stuff like that, I don't really get them... Does, my thing is, like, if I want to restart, I should make sure I let myself be able to restart so I can redo things, you know? But, uh, yeah, all right. Let's do it. Hey, this is RPG at Will. I hope you liked this episode of Lore and the Amazon Princess. If you want to check out some of my other material, you can click on my channel link below, or you can even subscribe if you'd like. I like to do some silly songs on the side, along with my RPG work. If you want to see some more group-oriented stuff, there's another channel called Gaming Idiots TV that I take part in. That's where we do all our group stuff, so I'll provide a link below if you want to check it out there. See you next time.